afternoon, quilt roadies. Thank you for stopping by. I um, I know some of you maybe are also um, hanging out in the stitch roadie world, and so some of this news will be boring because it'll be you've heard it twice. But anyway, I am up here in the beehive. It is it snowed last night, although most of it is um, it's uh, most of it's melted. It's just kind of patchy out there, but it's cold, and um, the mountains got socked, which was great. I mean, it always it looks so wonderful when our mountains are covered in snow. So if you are not aware, I am moving the beehive. Yes, I am. And I am a little bit closer to being at peace. I'm, in, I'm in excited about it all. There's, you know, more grandkid time is A-OK -okay for me. But um, least you think I am leaving sisters, that is not happening. I will still have a, a beehive too. <laughs> <laughs> a beehive too here in Sisters. But um, moving our primary home up into the Portland area. Yep, I know some of my friends think I am bonkers, but you know, I am motivated by love. That's all I can say. I am motivated by love. And I am blessed to be able to do this. Although, moving during a pandemic sucks and I don't recommend it. Um, there's nothing easy about it. <laughs> there is nothing easy about it. Uh, it's <laughs> it's a crazy world. It is a crazy world and I I just know that I mean my one my one friend Dale said that um, just realize that for six months your life will be chaos and I'm like no no I need to make this as easy as possible <laughs> yeah um, we've moved a lot so um, we're not unfamiliar with the process the whole issue is that we're older now and so this move will be done a lot with the help of movers because there's nobody around here. Um, the children all live three hours over on the other side of the mountain and they're working. So we just have to, yeah, we just have to deal with it. I'm still trying to grow out my bangs. And this is the thing that I've realized is I remember why I cut bangs. It's because I read an article that said bangs was the cheapest form of plastic surgery. Yeah. And I think that is absolutely the truth because as I'm growing out my bangs, my my gray hair is definitely just pronounced. And um, when I checked the Stitch Rody video, I noticed that Oh, my wrinkles were really showing up. And normally they're covered, but but so far, I mean, right now, I'm just going to deal with it. And, yeah. So if you're contemplating growing out your bang bangs, just think again that it might add a few years to your face. <laughs> yeah. I am... Packing up the beehive. It is, you know, and and so again, I have something that has disrupted the process of life. My hexes, my Sue Spargo squash squad, um, uh, my UFOs. Everything is kind of like I I definitely am doing some stitching, but it's more therapeutic than to accomplish anything. Uh, so. You know, the hexes are fun, but when you have to pack boxes, <laughs> that's a whole different... Of course, I have a lot of padding. All that fabric is going to be padding. Um, 
I'm excited. I am excited, although it is exhausting. And the process in a pandemic is a little bit different. <laughs> it's just a little bit different. I did get back um, a couple of quilts from the Long Armor. Uh, and they are the last ones that I'm going to send out until I get settled. And, um, but, you know, I have a whole pile of binding to do. So I'm going to show you those. Um, well, I'm going to show you one of them. So this one, don't ask me for the pattern name. It was from a long time ago in a class that my girlfriends and I took at BJ's Quilt Basket back when BJ still owned it, I think. I think it was back when BJ still owned it. And now it's not called BJ's Quilt Basket. It's called The Quilt Basket. But, um, and I can't remember the name of the designer or the pattern name, but I... Isn't that awesome? And it's, a, it's almost a perfect square. You know, it's almost a perfect square. And it's mostly out of like Daiwabos and Asian fabrics. And, and so then I chose this really cool background fabric that I, when I cut this off, I used, uh, I'm using it as the binding because it pretty much is going to, yeah, you know, look good on the front. The second one, I can't show you the front. Isn't that awful? I'm such a tease. I can't show you the front because it's a gift from my girlfriend Kathleen and I think she might watch my videos once in a while. And, um, you know, when there's nothing on TV and you're starting to head into winter and you're bored, silly, you might watch a kid quilt roadies, you know? And so I... Um, this is the back, <laughs> so you can kind of tell it's a Christmas one. Well, it can be more than just Christmas. I, I call it a Christmas one because some of the fabrics have holly leaves on them, and um, it's either a large table runner, if you have a table big enough, or actually I intended it to be like a bed runner like at the end of your bed just to kind of give your bed like the holiday feel and so I also had extra of the backing fabric and that is going to be the binding but I can't show you the front because I don't want her to see it yeah oh but you have to see this she is um a talented crocheter and she crochets washcloths for G because he loves those crocheted washcloths to do the kitchen stuff both here at home and in the van and so um, we we have we're so lucky but she made this gorgeous and she designed it um, she adapted a sweater pattern. This is what she told me. She adapted a sweater pattern into a crocheted afghan and for my daughter-in-law, Emily. And it is, oh, it is so soft and so warm and cozy. She's going to be able to snuggle under this with my grandson and watch television. So isn't that gorgeous? That yellow Oh, makes me think of spring. Makes me think of spring. So, that's exciting. And then, so I got some mail. Now, I know I've talked about my friend in the Yorkshire Boy. Yes. Graham. The Yorkshire Boy. On Instagram. He's in the UK, and 
you know, he's the one that made this, of course I'm packing now, made this fabulous uh, little holder. It can hang off anything, including a doorknob, or it can be a belt, go on, slip onto a belt. But I love this thing. And um, so I'm packing it up. Make sure it gets good. But he sent me a quilt. I mean, You know, quilting is such a healing, lovely art form. And I was having a very low day trying to process what life had in store, um, facing the election, facing COVID. We had a death in our family. And... Um, and then I received this bit of love. And I can't tell you, these moments when we make things and share them uh, are bigger than, bigger than anything. And so I opened this up and I cried. Look at this. That is going to be hung in my new house whenever I find it. <laughs> but he quilted it. He he has a long arm quilting business. Um, and oh, it's just absolutely adorable. Absolutely adorable. So I'm going to, um, let's see here. <clears throat> Make sure that, and I'll put it in the description down below too. Um, but, up there. <laughs> Yorkshire boy quilter. <laughs> and there's like an underline at the bottom between the words, you know, but there, there's his, his site on Instagram. And, oh my gosh, he shows off his quilting of all his customer quilts on his Instagram. And he must have fabulous customers. But he makes their quilts just sing. Um, oh, yeah. And his, and his uh, new shop is just fabulous, fabulous. But again... love it. And it has stars um, quilted all over it. Yeah. So, I have um, been plotting what to do um, during this time, because conceivably, unless we find a house to move into, conceivably, the beehive could be going into storage. And then, um, well, we hunt for a house, but truly hunting for a house during a pandemic? What kind of crazy is that? I know. I can hear my girlfriends now. What kind of crazy is that? But I promised you guys that we would be doing the... For those who are participating, a year-long stitch-along of this project by Buttermilk Basin. Now, <clears throat> you can do it horizontal as a wall hanging, or you can do it, um, or is this perpendicular and horizontal, <laughs> um, as a table runner, or as I saw in um, Old World Quilt Shop, a pillow. And then this little round circle is detachable, and every month it has a different motif that you attach. And there's a variety of ways to attach that. Um, I kind of liked, um, Dale did hers with Velcro, I believe it was. But you can use snaps, you know. There's just um, hooks. People have done a variety of different things. 
but I know I shared with you that I really wanted this done and both Dale and Robin got theirs done and Robin I believe made two of them two sets so I decided the way I was going to get this done was to do one of these circles because each month the little kit comes with a theme for that month that I would start that in January and work you know work my way through all of the patterns till the end of the year on that note I decided that I really needed to get the base of this done by uh, in December so that I could no in November so that I could make um, January's in December you see what I'm Am I making any sense? You have to understand that right now, I barely can understand myself. I'm having arguments with myself like you would not believe. And I don't listen. <laughs> so, that's what we're doing. We're doing the base, whichever way you choose, in November. December, we're going to start with January's block then we can attach that and then in January we'll do February's block so we'll stay ahead do you get it makes perfect sense doesn't it makes perfect sense I had bought the kit and I know I said, I said this I shared this with you before I had bought the kit and it didn't have the pattern in it so my girlfriend Dale sent me her pattern and um, this kit was to make this one the uh, the wall hanging one but I really loved the pillow not the table runner but that at old world quilt shop they made a pillow a bed pillow out of this and I decided that in my in uh, when I have a girlfriend guest room in my wherever my house is uh, I wanted to have that pillow on the bed, you know, just kind of try to get people to come visit me, you know. But the problem was, is that the kit was for this. And this one is made on a wool base. This is made on a linen base. So then I pondered, how am I going to make that and what I came up with, because you know I don't follow the patterns like they're supposed to, so I cut out I cut out my piece, my linen piece, and I backed it with SF101 to make it not so floppy. And eventually I will turn this under and sew it like a quarter inch or a half inch, whatever looks good once I get the letters on here. And um, and then I'll stitch it to the back of the fabric, uh, the front of the fabric. See at the bottom? I didn't want to go out and get another piece of wool uh, when I could use what was in the kit. So to make this a little bit sturdier for my pillow, I just cut it out to the size that they said and I backed it with SF 101 which is a Pellon product and so it gives it a little bit more sturdy and then I am NOT doing this sawtooth border because it's going to be this smaller one with the for a pillow yeah so I don't have to use those pieces I'll save them for some other project Here's the background and the backing for my pillow. And then I went ahead and traced my letters. I'll show you. Now the pattern comes with two sizes because interestingly enough, which I discovered as I was looking at the pattern, these letters are bigger. These letters are slightly smaller 
and I started tracing the bigger letters when I realized, no, I need the smaller letters. And I was tracing it on um, my soft fuse fusible. And once I got it traced onto the fusible, then I ironed it, steamed it to my wool piece. So this is my black wool. And you see how I bunched them together so I could save that piece of wool? So here's my pieces that I have to cut out. And once I cut them out, I'll arrange them on the back, on the back uh, backing piece, and set them up like I want, measuring the top and bottom, get them all centered, and then I'll steam those down and attach them. And then I'll buttonhole stitch around all of these letters and do the, I think it's a feather stitch that she does. Um, she kind of accents some of the letters with a feather stitch. The thing I'm warning you about if you're doing this is I didn't realize, I just started tracing away, that there are two patterns, one for big letters and one for small letters, and the I am using the small letters. And the way I did this, because all she gives you is a quarter, let's see where, where is everything, oh, yeah, she gives you this, uh, only the quarter piece for the circle. You see that right there? So I folded my piece of soft fuse into fourths. And then I laid it over the pattern and I traced it and then I cut it out. And it came out perfect. So I used a steam iron to steam these onto the wool. And I steamed both sides because that's how, how I roll. It sticks better that way. And now I'm going to cut these letters out and then steam them to the background. Once I do that, then it'll be ready to stitch down. And so I can do that when I'm on the road, um, back and forth over the mountain. Um, so that's what I'm trying to do is to get things organized in a, in a way like get my binding on some quilts so that I could be tacking binding um, when I can't access. Just the thought of not being able to access everything freaks me out. Yeah, freaks me out. But I am well more troubled by the fact that I am limited to seeing my family because of COVID, winter weather. Um, and you know, when your grandkids are young, that's kind of when you want to see them. They're excited to see you. But once they, you know, my older grandson, he's kind of excited, but he's almost getting to that age where, you know, the only thing that has saved us is the fact that school isn't existing and so he can't be hanging out with all his little friends you know so we are looking a little bit more interesting so but um yeah i just want to be near them be near them it's so simple isn't it i um was worried that I had packed away because I've already started packing and um, schlepping boxes up to Portland and putting them in storage and I was worried that I had packed away the giveaway <laughs> patterns <laughs> from the last quilt roadies and I am going to try very hard to at least do one video a week um, I need it. I need the conversation. I love the comments, although you will notice that I barely have time to answer anything anymore, and it may not. Um, I love reading them. I love reading them, so please keep, keep commenting, and if you haven't subscribed, subscribe, and um, thumbs up or thumbs down, whatever you're feeling at the moment, it's a-okay with me. 
and hopefully we will get to um, move through the holiday season without a whole lot of tears and do some stitching, work on some projects, and and then it'll be fun to set up the new beehive. Now I'll have a little beehive here in the town of Sisters because my heart is in Central Oregon for sure, but um, most of the beehive will be up in the Portland area. I just have to find I have to find somebody who wants to sell me their house. <laughs> so the giveaways, yeah. I did the random comment generator, and so please, sooner than later, because otherwise they're going to get lost and you're not going to get them. So email me um, at woollymammoth1 at gmail.com, your mailing address, or message me on Instagram. Uh, those are the two ways you can get a hold of me. And the email address is somewhere in the description box. So let's get to it. I did the random comment generator. And for the camper, Buttermilk Basin's camper, isn't that adorable? It's Marty Haas. Yeah, Marty, so be sure sooner than later. Otherwise, I'm only going to the mailbox one time. For the ski, um, the Buttermilk Basin red truck with the skis, it is Karen Crace. Congratulations, Karen. And then for hugs. Yeah, this is an awesome, awesome quilt. And these blocks are like 30 inch blocks. These are big letters. And the winner of this is Ballard Norse Droning. Send me your mailing address. Mailing address. So, congratulations, everyone. Uh, I hope that uh, we will, you will be there for me during the process of, of packing up and moving the beehive and unpacking it. It's going to be like shopping all over again. And in the meantime, we're going to be tacking binding, talking about life. And um, we had a fabulous time up in uh, Portland with our family, and it was very quiet. Um, nothing going on. Uh, all the fear about the post-election hoopla did not happen downtown. And um, I am grateful for, uh, I'm grateful that um, people are staying safe. Because um, when you keep yourself safe and you wear a mask and you take care of yourself, you are taking care of people like my daughter-in-law and son who are essential workers in the health field. So thank you very much. And hang in there and come along with me, okay? Thanks for watching. And be sure to like and subscribe on Quilt Roadies.